Do you, do you have a spe specific characteristics of drivers that you look for when they come in the door? Well, you know, that's a great question. We, we hire drivers of varying uh, experience backgrounds. Um, our, our, normal, our normal hiring would involve hiring only experienced drivers, but we have programs uh, set up, training programs, uh, that enable us to hire uh, drivers who who lack experience, um, and uh, and and drivers who are uh, obtaining their CDL for the first time. So experience for us uh, is not the most important factor. Uh, skill and proficiency are. So we'll take people of varying experience backgrounds and we will provide the training that they need in order to ensure that when they're on the highway, they're, they're prepared and qualified and competent. Um, so we have all, uh, uh, we have, uh, all kinds of solutions uh, to, uh, to help drivers uh, obtain and, and become uh, proficient in, uh, in driving the equipment. Um, and I think that's one of the other areas where investment is needed by motor carriers is in training. Um, we, uh, you've seen it with the entry level driver training rule, which, which is good in that it's, it's proficiency based. Um, we agree that it should be proficiency based. Uh, we also provide behind the wheel and classroom defensive driving training. So all of our drivers, uh, are trained in defensive driving uh, techniques and principles. And they, they uh, do that training both behind the wheel and in a classroom. Um, so we think uh, that is an important facet of, of our safety program. When we started doing defensive driving training uh, in 2007, uh, within two years, we had seen uh, close to a 50% reduction in DOT recordable accidents. Uh, but it requires a, a commitment. It requires, excuse me, it requires a financial commitment. It requires a commitment to take the time and dedicate the resources necessary to provide that training to your drivers. Um, but we believe there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of value in doing that. So if you were to ask me, you know, the, the key pieces of our, of our safety program, it would be higher standards uh, for individuals. When we, when we look to hire individuals, Though we can uh, train people of varying experience backgrounds, um, we are pretty uh, stringent when it comes to personal characteristics and character. Um, those, those things are very hard to train, so we look for those in, in all of our employees. Um, and then we work uh, hard with our, with our uh, partners in the supply chain to uh, create more efficiencies for our truck drivers. Again, in the grand scheme of things, uh, we need to increase driver wages. We need to be able to attract and retain the best people for this industry. And to do that, uh, we need to eliminate a lot of the inefficiencies in the supply chain. And then finally, uh, we make significant investments in technologies. I mentioned the ELDs. Uh, we also invest in uh, collision avoidance systems, uh, electronic stability control systems, um, we also have invested in in-cab event recorders, and uh, we see a very uh, decisive impact on driver performance and safety with the investment in those technologies. Technology won't solve all of our problems alone, um, but they are important. They're uh, they're. Uh, uh, depending on the technologies we're talking about, they're, they're providing an increased level of protection to our drivers and to the motoring public. Um, certainly, there is a lot that you can do as, new, uh, as an individual motor carrier to leverage those technologies effectively. Um, on a standalone basis, the technology uh, may or may not be uh, uh, innately effective, though we think it is but it's even more powerful when it's leveraged properly by the motor carrier. Are there ways that you monitor drivers and, and 
that shows how the technology might pay off? Do you have any, do you keep data on those kinds of things? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we keep a lot of data. I think a lot, like a lot of large uh, companies, and we're a large uh, publicly owned company, um, we have tremendous volumes of data. Um, part of the challenge is, is learning how to use that data effectively. Uh, and we're certainly getting better at that as a, as a company. And I think as an industry, we're getting, excuse me, we're getting better at using data. Uh, but we, what we try to do with our technology is to get inside the cab and to see how our drivers are performing and to base our success not on whether or not there is a collision, but on how well the driver fundamentally operates the equipment from a safety standpoint. And we use the data to help us establish uh, what the driver is doing behind the wheel and to provide the driver the kind of feedback that they need as individuals to improve their skills. And, um, you know, that requires an investment in technologies. We, we started last year uh, installing in-cab event recorders in our, in our equipment. Um, we've been pretty vocal about that in, in our industry. And um, we see a pronounced improvement among the fleets who have installed uh, those event recorders versus the uninstalled portion of the fleet. Um, I attribute that to uh, the fact that we are really providing the driver uh, very prescriptive real-time information to help them improve their driving skills. Now, again, uh, if, if the motor carrier is not disciplined about using that information, and is unwilling to uh, to hold individuals accountable for the things they should be responsible for, um, it may not have much value. Um, but you've got to make that investment in technology first and foremost before you can leverage it. And uh, how you leverage it is really what distinguishes one motor carrier from another.